The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Well, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching the program today. I believe this message is really going to speak to you, and I'm so glad to have my wife. We normally have all of our kids. We've got five kids, but they're all over the place, and we couldn't get them together. But I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas, and we appreciate you and love you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let this message speak to your heart. So I want to talk to you for just a moment. You know, I noticed that just in the last 10 years or so, there's something that's been unique that's happened, and it's called sanitizer gel, hand sanitizer. Have you noticed that? Everywhere you go, it's like in the hospitals. I love that, by the way. In the lobbies, they've got hand sanitizer. Um, you go into stores, and, and, and they have hand sanitizers. As a matter of fact, I brought some with me, um, especially when you come to a big place like this. You need to carry your own bottle in your hand. It's sanitized. I'm curious. In this, you're in God's house, so you better not lie. How many of you have some of this on you right now? Let me see your hand. <laughs> Look at that. That's a lot of sanitizer. And, and, and the deal with sanitizer is it is um, it's supposed to kill the germs so that you don't get infected with the disease and it gets all in you. And so if you use the sanitizer, it will, it'll kill the germs. And I want to talk to you today because um, I think what has happened is we have kind of sanitized Christmas where we've killed the Jesus germs and nobody really catches the real spirit of Christmas and what it's all about, which is not reindeer and presents and gifts and all of that, which is fun. All of that's beautiful and celebrate it and enjoy it. But we don't need to sanitize Christmas and kill the Jesus that it's all about. That's what he, he is our message. The ultimate present, this is the big point I want to make. The ultimate present is the presence of Jesus. That is the ultimate present. And I want to draw a quick little contrast between Santa and the Savior. I almost feel silly preaching this sermon to you deep theological people, but this is me and I have to keep it simple. So, so I, want to, I want to draw a quick and give you four quick points that, that, that because here, here's what I want you to understand. Um, Santaology says, the gospel according to Santa says, that if you're nice, you get good gifts. If you're naughty, you get bad gifts. And the first contrast that I want to draw is Santa's presence are based on behavior. But the Savior's presence is based on grace. It's a big difference. If you're good, Santa says, you get presents. If you're bad, you get a bag of switches. You get, in other words, what you earn and what you deserve. But Jesus does not give his presents because Santa gives presents. But G the Savior gives his presence, which is the best gift. And Jesus does not give his presence based on behavior. He gives it based on grace. Somebody said, well, I've been good. But what you've got to understand is good isn't good enough. But God is God enough. And that's the message of Christmas. <laughs> Romans chapter 3 and verse 33 said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all fall short. Isaiah said, all of our righteousness, all of our goodness is like offering God filthy rags. And you don't want to know the reference if you read that text, the filthy rags, what it's referring to. As a matter of fact, the apostle Paul said, when I put all of my achievements and offer them to God, they are as dung. That was the word he used, poop. I remember when my children were small and Sharice and I were trying to potty train the, the kids and you bring the little potty in and every time they use it, it's a huge celebration. 
And, and when they would use it, one of the girls would use it, we, they would, Sharice would say, come, come, come. And we would all gather around and she would stand up and we would all, yay, yay. I can remember the girl saying, daddy, daddy, aren't you proud of me? I pooped. Do you know how ridiculous it is when you say to our Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, aren't you proud of me? Look how good I've been. And God says, yay. It's filthy rags. It's, it's unclean. But when you understand that what He does is His his presence is not based on our behavior. It's based on His grace. The second thing I want you to see is Santa, Santa's presence are limited, but the Savior's presence is unlimited. This is as good as it's going to get, so you might as well get with my little Santa Claus message. So here it goes. Santa's presence are limited. But the Savior's presence is unlimited because Santa, you know, he lives in the North Pole with elves and reindeers and Mrs. Claus and, and, and he comes one day out of the year because his presence are limited and he gives you what he's going to give you one day if you've deserved it and you earn it and you're good. And then he bolts back to the North Pole and he doesn't come back. His presence, they are, they are limited, but the Savior's presence is unlimited. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's with us. That's the message of Christmas. You know, the politicians every year when they run, they use a strategy called the identification strategy. And the bottom line on it is this, is, is they try to identify with the average voter. And so what they will do is they will pull up in a motorcade, all these limousines or whatever, and the politician will slip out of his pinstripe expensive suit and take his tie off and roll his shirt sleeve up. He'll put on some safety gargles and a hard hat, and he'll walk through the factory and he'll act like he really is an illusion of identification, but he'll pretend like he's interested and he'll stand there as a photo op. And, all, and the amazing thing is the people in the factory, yes, he's one of us. He's one of us. He understands us. And as soon as the photo uh, pose is over. He bolts out to the car. He doesn't give up his law degree. He doesn't give up his suite. He doesn't give up all of his titles and his fame and his fortune. He puts his pinstripe back on and he goes to the next place. It's over. It was an illusion of identification. But we have a Savior who came down from the galaxies through the stars and he did not present an illusion of identification with us, but he was born in a manger and he lived for 30 years and he never preached a sermon and he never healed a person. He never sung a song. He worked as a carpenter with his hands. He laid foundations. He framed houses. He built things. He dealt with delinquent accounts. He worked. He, he did yard work. He worked for 30 years. He lived. It was not an illusion of identification. He knew and went through everything that we are experiencing. He experienced it. And then the last three years of his life, he was despised and rejected and betrayed and spit upon and crucified. It wasn't an illusion of identification, that's the message of Christmas is that Jesus absolutely understands us. And you may be listening to me right now and you may be sitting there, you may be streaming live and you may say, you just don't understand relationally this Christmas, my life is falling apart. I'm facing the holiday alone. Uh, my spouse has left me or my family's in shambles. My kid's on drugs. I'm in trouble. I feel like giving up and no one understands. And I want to add two words to your sentence, except Jesus. 
oh, but I'm under pressure and financially I don't know what I'm going to do and I, I'm worried about my future and I'm worried about my finances and I'm worried about my family and I just feel I, I'm, I, I'm struggling with this addiction. I'm, I'm dealing with this depression. I have so much anger and I, I, you just don't understand. I'm, I, I'm, I'm living a lie basically and no one understands and I just want to add two words except Jesus. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmity. And the message of Christmas is Jesus lived righteously. He died sacrificially. And He rose bodily. And He offers His presence as your present for Christmas. And he says, I am Emmanuel. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you when everyone else gives up on you. I'll hold your hand. Everybody take a praise break if you know I'm talking about your Jesus right now. The third thing, the third contrast between Santa and the Savior is Santa's presence are what we want. But the Savior's presence is what we need. You know, we all have an it, a, a it list. That's it. You know, the, the, it represents that, that gift that, I, that if I could just get that. Your it may be a computer for Christmas. Your, your it may be a coat or shoes or the latest gadget. And now I want you to think back in your life to your first it in life. Once I get it, oh, if I can just get it, then I'll have it in my life and I, oh, I wouldn't probably ever want anything else again. Your first it, was it a house? If I could get that house in that neighborhood, Oh, if I could get that car, if I could get that job, if I could get that man, if I could get that, that, that woman, if I could get that girl. And I hate to bust your balloon, but once you get it, is that it? I live in that neighborhood. Is that it? I'm here. Is that it? I got all the money. Is that it? I'm making more. Is that it? Is that it? It isn't it. It loses its shine. Santa's presence are what we want. But the Savior's presence is what we need. Because what our families really need is His presence. His presence that heals. His presence that forgives. His presence that drives unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred and anger out. And my prayer this Christmas, somewhere that we stop the busyness and we understand that the real present is His presence and there's nothing like the presence of Jesus and He's here right now. Would you welcome Him with your praise? Somebody, somebody show the value of his presence in your life with a praise. Come on, come on, come on. I know it's Christmas service, and, but, but we ought to get emotional this time of the year. Jesus, Emmanuel, he's with me. And it's not based on my performance. It's based on his grace. The last point is... Santa's presence are under the tree. But the Savior's presence was on a tree. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus hung on a tree. The ultimate gift. His blood. His body. The communion set that you hold in your hand. His cross represents His presence in your life. I want to say something big. Listen big now. The blood of Jesus can power wash your soul. The blood of Jesus can power wash your guilty conscience. The blood of Jesus can power wash your guilt and your shame and your condemnation. The blood of Jesus can power wash your addictions and set you free. Yeah. 
And so many times we get it wrong. Last point I'm going to make is this. The message of Christmas is Jesus was the initiator of our love relationship because we get it backwards. I, I think men ought to be men. I think if there's going to be a relationship in the natural, the guy ought to initiate it. Our girls, when they were growing up, uh, we would tell them, they would say, he's so cute. Should I, should I Facebook him? Should I, t- should, I, should I text him? Should I call him? No. You just sit there and look beautiful and make him sweat. Because a real man will initiate the relationship. A real man is the one who pursues. When, when I met Cherise and we went out on our first date, uh, we, we, we weren't, you know, I just met her one time and it was real quick. And then, then there was this other time when, when I knew I probably won't see this girl again. So, you know, you know how you, you kind of feel like you think they like you, but you're not sure they like you. And, and I, I was on a, I was on a, I was like, I may not be back here, so I'm going for it. And she was standing around with a bunch of her friends and I was standing there and they were all talking. I think it's about a restaurant or something. Well, I like this. I like, I like pizza. I like this. I like that. I like this. And I just looked right in the middle of all of it. Didn't know her and looked right in her beautiful brown eyes. And I said, I like you. That was my opening line. Is it? And just like the wise men, she was starstruck. She... I had her. I like, just try that. I like you. Just walk up to a girl, guy. Come on. Be the initiator. If you like some girl, walk up to her. Drake, I'm talking to you. Walk up to her. Say, hi, I'm Drake. Anybody ever tell you you look like Amy Grant? I don't know. Come up with something. Y'all don't even know who Amy Grant is. Farrah Fawcett, whatever. I don't know. She's, she's gone too. What was I saying? Listen, what's interesting, what's interesting is this. The church is called the bride and Jesus is called the groom. But we get it backwards. We think we're the initiators of the love relationship. God, I'm trying real hard. And if I do this and if I don't do that, you'll love me. And God, God, if I'm perfect, you'll love me. And God, I'm really trying to do good so you'll love me. I really, I really, I want to, I want to text you. I want to call you. Oh, 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 please, please, please have me. Please take me, please. You don't even understand the message of Christmas. The message of Christmas is he was the initiator of your love relationship and all you have to do is sit there and look beautiful because he came down from the galaxy through the stars and wrapped himself in flesh to initiate, to chase you, to find his bride and you are his bride and he has pursued you all of your life even when you weren't living for him he was standing there he was there all the time he would never give up on you loving you pursuing you still wanting you even when you had other lovers he said i still love you and first john puts it this way we love him everybody read that we love him because he First, love us. Oh, get happy right there. I don't have to earn his love. He already initiated it. Boy, that'll set you free. And here's the deal. So holiness in your life is a response to what he initiated. Sure, we live holy. Sure, there are things we don't do. But it's not because of a list of rules. It's my response to the one who's chased me and won me. My faith is a response. It's not something I work trying to get him to love me. It's a response to his love. Dying on a cross. My my standards. And we all need standards. But it's not... What say makes him love me? Because you're good some days and some days you really mess up. But boy, if you ever get the fact that Christmas is a message that he, he's the one who, who, who loved me first. 
That'll set you free. And I'm saved by grace, not by works. But because I love him, I want to please him and be like him. And that's the message of Christmas. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Normally we call people down front. We don't have time to do that. And I'm fixing to, we're fixing to have communion. But boy, I really feel this deep in my heart that people have been running and backsliders are here and lost people are here and people who've never made a commitment to Jesus and something's major missing in your life and God brought you to this Christmas service so that you might know that God so loved the world that he gave his presence for your present and you can be forgiven and the only thing he wants from you for Christmas is the only thing that you can give him that he can't give himself and that's your sin give him your sin for Christmas that's what he wants from you if you're in this room today and you want Jesus Christ to be your Savior, He never comes where He's not invited and you must invite Him. I won't embarrass you. I won't humiliate you. I'm going to pray with you right where you are in a moment. We're going to have communion. It's going to power wash you. <laughs> Praise God. Power wash your family. How many of you like for the blood of Jesus to power wash your family? All the bitterness get out. All the hurt get out. All nothing but healing and love there. Pray this prayer. If you mean business and you want to get right with God, every Christian in this room, bow your head and begin to pray. I mean pray earnestly because there's souls in this room. Pastor, pray for me today. I want to get washed in the blood. I realize He loves me and it's not based on performance. He loves me. Pray for me. If that's you and you want to get right with God, boldly raise your hand right where you're standing. I want to see it. Hands, 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 hands. Beautiful. Raise it high and unashamed all over this room. All over this room. Raise it high. Up in the balcony, they're being raised. Oh, there, 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 there. Keep it up. Just keep it up. Another moment. About all over this room. I want you to look. And if you see someone with their hand raised, gently put your hand on their shoulder. They're all around you. They're all around you. It's beautiful. All the way up in the balcony. Whole rows. So great. It's so great. If you're in overflow, there's a pastor there. Raise your hand. If you're streaming live, just raise your hand. Jesus will see it. Anyone else? All right. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I believe you lived a righteous life sinless. I believe you died a sacrificial death and I believe you rose bodily. You rose from the dead so that I could have new life. So I receive you. You chased me when I was running from you, but now I receive the ultimate gift. I receive your presence for my present and I receive Emmanuel he lives in me. He goes with me from this day forward. In Jesus' name. And Jesus said, this bread represents my body. Take the piece of bread and would you stand to your feet, please, all over the room. This bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me. And I speak healing and health over every person's body under the sound of my voice. We rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. Let health power wash our bodies with the blood of Jesus and healing power. Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me. In this cup, is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins. Everybody say, Jesus, power wash my life. Power wash my family, my body, my mind, my sins, my past. In Jesus' name, take, drink, this do in remembrance of me. Start your year off on the right path, seeking God's best in 2016. 
Join Pastor Jensen Franklin and thousands of people from around the world for our annual 21-day fast beginning January 3rd, 2016. This month, we have prepared two special resources that will encourage you throughout your journey of prayer and fasting and help you pray the Lord's Prayer like never before. With your gift of any amount, we will send you the brand new CD recording by Jensen Franklin praying the Lord's Prayer. This powerful prayer CD will inspire and lead you deeper into God's presence as you fast and pray. And with your best gift of $45 or more, you may request the Lord's Prayer Kit. This kit includes Jensen Franklin's prayer CD, a beautiful display of the Lord's Prayer, Dr. Mark Rutland's new book, 21 Seconds to Change Your World, as well as his inspired teaching on the Lord's Prayer recorded live at Free Chapel. Commit the new year to God through prayer and fasting and watch your faith go to the next level as you become devoted to the moment. Kingdom Connection is a soul-winning ministry that is reaching the world through broadcasting, expansion into new church campuses, and global acts of compassion. By using the technology of today to fulfill the Great Commission, we are able to connect with countless people and reach hundreds of thousands of lives. Our broadcasts connect with people all around the world who say that the messages speak directly to them. Our ministry exists to help build a connection for strengthening your faith and living out your God-given purpose. And our missions and relief work helps connect you to desperate situations, showing the love of Christ through global acts of compassion. We feel the time is bright and God is leading us to grow. And that only happens when you partner with us through Connection Partnership. For as little as a dollar a day, you'll be helping us reach further than we ever have before. For more information on how you can be a part of the ministry and enjoy exclusive partner benefits, go online or call 888-339-0049 for more information. We can't do everything, but together we can do something amazing. is real, vivid, alive, beating, breathing. It happens behind closed doors and out in front. There's joy, there's laughter, and chaos. Lifelong friendships are forged, love is found, moments cherished, and never forgotten. Life is a gift. And together, we are real family. Real friends. Real people.
experiencing real life. This is Free Chapel. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.